This video will cover installing a supplemental power supply in a Vista 20P alarm panel. If you're asking why would I need to do that? Well, you may be tired of using your standard plain old boring control panel. So you've decided to upgrade to the graphical user interface control panel with lots of bells and whistles. Well, here lies the problem. Looking at the schematic diagram for your Vista, you'll notice this tiny little block that says optional power supply. It's easy to miss. What this means is touchscreen keypads may require external power supply due to aux power limitations. Now what does that mean? Pins 4 through 7 is where you would normally hook up the touchscreen. But they have a problem. The maximum current you can get out of them is 600 milliamps. So how are you going to know if your new touchscreen is going to exceed that? Dare I say it? Yes. Math. First, you have to know what's hooked up to these contacts, then you need to calculate total current being used. Let's work through an example. The average alarm system will have two keypads, front door and back door. And how about an expansion board? This adds extra zones and output relays. And glass breakage detectors. In this example, we'll use five. The Vista installation manual has this table in it. It actually lists how much current each of these items will pull. The 6160 keypads pull 150 milliamps each. The expansion module, 100 milliamps. The specification sheet for the glass brake detectors state 24 milliamps each. Let's add them all up. Two control panels, 300 milliamps. Five glass brake detectors, 120 milliamps. One expansion module, 100 milliamps. Total, 420 milliamps being used. So, how much current is left? 600 minus 420 gives us 180 milliamps to play with. This control panel pulls 280 milliamps. This is well above the 180 milliamps we have available. We're going to need a power supply. Unfortunately, your parts list is a little bit bigger than just a power supply. You also need another battery and another power transformer, which coincidentally means either adding more outlets or adding a power strip. Let's take a look at the parts that I ordered for this video and the cost as of October 2015. As far as how to hook it up, well, the spec sheet didn't really help us. So let's look at the Vista installation manual. This is all they give us, one lousy little paragraph. Let me see if I can do a better job of explaining it. Okay, let's take a look at how to wire all this together. We'll be using pins 4 through 7 on the Vista panel. This is your existing control panel. Routed between them, you have data lines and power lines. Don't forget you have a battery, and they're hooked up through the flying leads. This is all wiring that you currently already have. Now, we want to add one of these fancy graphical user interface panels. Hooking up the data lines is easy. It's a straight shot. The problem arises when you go to hook up power. Remember, the Vista can't provide enough current to drive your new control panel. We fix this by installing a supplemental power supply. You'll also want an additional battery. In the event of a power outage, this additional battery will provide power to your new control panel. It is very important, and I can't stress this enough, so I'll say it again. It's very important that you route a wire from the common or negative on the supplemental power supply to the common or negative on the Vista 20 panel. A 22 gauge wire would work fine here. Let me take a few seconds to explain why we need this wire. The output voltage of the Vista panel is 12 volts when referenced to an output of 0 volts. Now, for several reasons that are beyond the scope of this video, the reference level of your supplemental power supply may not be 0 volts. In this example, our reference is sitting at 4 volts. The power supply is designed to put out 12 volts above the reference, so you have 16 volts out. Bear with me, this is where it gets weird. When the control panel looks at the power supply, all it cares about is the difference between the reference voltage and the output voltage. In this case, 16 minus 4 is 12 volts. So your control panel is happy. The problem occurs anytime you hook wiring between systems that have different DC power supplies, such as these data lines. Here's what just happened. Remember the Vista is referenced from 0 to 12 volts. Supplemental power supply referenced 4 to 16 volts. The difference between the lowest reference and the highest voltage is 16 volts. In layman's terms, this is a very bad thing to do. If you didn't follow all that, don't worry about it. The fix is really easy. Just install that jumper wire I was telling you about. By wiring all the negative terminals of every component in your alarm system together, you've effectively clamped your reference voltage to zero, and that solves the problem. 
Let's see, where were we? Oh yes, we just put in the jumper wire. Moving on, hook up your battery, the negative terminal to your control panel, and then the positive terminal. Power to your power supply is going to come from a new transformer. You'll hook this up directly to the AC terminals. Since AC voltage has no polarity, you can hook the wires up in any order you want. Finally, plug the transformer into a wall outlet and you're good to go. And finally, let's take a look at what it looks like when we install this power supply. After the UPS guy hands you these boxes, unpackage them. Place the battery somewhere in the Vista panel. There will be two pre-terminated wires in your kit. You want to install them onto the power supply. The reason why you're doing this right now is you need to know how long those leads are. Because when you install this power supply into the panel, they have to be able to reach the battery. While trying to choose your location, keep in mind any future expansion you may want to do in this panel. I think I'll place it right here. We'll mount the power supply with this double back foam tape. Split it in half and install it on the top and bottom of your power supply. Then you just press it into place. Please remember not to have the battery hooked up while you're doing this in case you touch the circuit board to the panel. Head on back over to your pile of parts and grab this transformer. For wire, you'll want two conductor 18 gauge. I use automotive wire. It's a lot cheaper than what the security companies charge you. Strip the wire. Tightly twist it. Then install it. Either wire can go on either terminal. The transformer doesn't care. Route the wire into your Vista panel and install the wires onto your power supply. Again, the order makes no difference. Remember that wire we talked about earlier for clamping the reference voltages together? Install one end on pin 4 and the other end on the negative terminal of your power supply. Finally, you can now install the power wires for your control panel. They'll run directly from this power supply to the panel. Likewise, since you have a lot of power available now, you can route wires to any other piece of equipment you want to operate. And there you have it, a fully installed supplemental power supply. All you have left to do is hook up the battery and plug in the transformer. Speaking of batteries, in part one I covered the procedure for selecting the proper size battery as well as the proper size wire. Time for my disclaimer. I am not a professional alarm installer. I'm just some guy that likes to learn new stuff and pass it on to others. Thanks for watching.